everybody. Welcome. It's Monday night, 8 p.m. Eastern. Time for Stampin' with Denise. Welcome. I'm so glad you can join me. Oh, I was racing to make it here on time. So hopefully I've got everything gathered and I don't have to get up too many times to get supplies I forgot. So hope everybody's had a great start to their week. Hopefully you got a little bit of crafting in over the weekend. I did. It's been very nice here in Michigan. I didn't get out much over the weekend, but I did get a little out a little bit. So thank you so much for joining me tonight. If you recall, last week we made this really cute birthday card that will stand up. So and I thought that was kind of cute. So somebody's going to win this card because they shared my video when I made it. And that person is, oops, let me find my paper. It's Diana Knapp. I think Diana's in North Carolina, if I recall. So Diana, I want to thank you for sharing my video, and I'll get this out in the mail to you soon. So thank you. So that reminds me, if you like what I'm making tonight, I appreciate it if you share. And then you need to comment, share down below in the comments and you might just get a chance to win the really cute card I am making tonight. Um, if you're on if you're watching this on YouTube after the fact, you know, please you know subscribe and um, hit the little bell so you get notifications whenever I post a new video. Okay? Great. Um, let me change the view here. I gotta do I gotta get something and then we will get started. Okay. Give me just a second here. Oop. Oops, I almost hit stop. I don't want to do that, do I? That wouldn't be good. That would not be good at all. Okay. Then we'd be starting all over again. Okay, let me switch the view. There we are. Hi, friends. I, I just scratched myself, and so now I'm trying to make sure I don't bleed all over. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, and so tonight I have a fun fold card for you. It's called a tower, a pinwheel tower card. You see like that? It'll fold flat. It'll fit into our standard and sized envelope. And it's got multiple pages for you to embellish and do whatever you want with it. You know, however you want to embellish it. So I think it's kind of a fun card. It's not hard at all. So I am going to set this over to the side for right now. And we are going to get started. Okay, so for this, normally for a card base, I use the thick whisper white cardstock, but because this has so many layers, um, we're going to use the regular, the thinner cardstock, okay? So not the thick stuff. Let me get my, make sure I got my blade out. I got a brand new blade in there, so that should, when we get to cutting, but let me. The first piece of the white cardstock is four and a quarter by five and three quarters, okay? And we are going to score that at three fourths. One and a half. Two and a quarter and three. Okay. Okay, there we go. There's that. We'll be bringing the trimmer back in in just a little bit. Okay. And what we're going to do, look, i got to find my bone folder here. Let's see, where is that? Um, here it is. 
ones and we are going to burnish these so we have a nice fold. So it, and this will help us help our card, you know, lay flat and do by burnishing those edges. Okay. And so this is going to be kind of the skeleton that we're going to build off of for this card, okay? And for 3D items, I like to use something that is strong so that we know that it's it's going to stay. And for this particular project, I am going to use Tombow because it does give me just a few seconds of wiggle room that Seal Plus or one of our other strong adhesives doesn't necessarily give me. So we're going to do that. Make sure it's lined up and we're just gluing it over like that. And let that set for just a second. Like I said, this looks really hard, but it's not. Okay, so that's where we're at. And look at that, it's already standing up. Now, we've got, oh, three other pieces of this. This is the regular thinner white cardstock. And it is four and a quarter by two and three quarters, okay? The measurement for everything going this direction is going to be four and a quarter. Okay, so then we are going to take, going to glue it, glue this piece right on there. We're going to just continue that all the way around. So I'm going to put a little bit, put a, a bit of glue right here. And you'll see how this is going to come. Actually, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to set it up so I'm sure that I can get it square and level and even. There we go. I'm going to let it set for just a second. There we go. And you'll see I, I can even, whoops, I don't want, I did that a little bit too early, I guess. Okay, uh, let me try this again here. more glue. Let's try this again here. Okay, there we go. I'm not going to fold it down yet. I'm just going to secure it there. I can also stick my fingers in it a little bit like that. Okay, we're going to put the next piece right here. See, we're building that pinwheel. Just going to put a drop of glue right here. Whoops. Hold that for just a second. Let that, I'm gonna let that dry. We've almost got our pin mill made. And then, so everything's at a 90 degree angle to the last one you put on, okay? Oops, I got a little bit of extra glue there, but I'm gonna kind of spread that down that way. There we go. Make sure that's lined up. down. There we go. There's the skeleton to our card. Super simple. Okay, so now to, in, for today's um, project, I am going, you know, in this one I use the hand penned paper. Okay. And these are the pieces I'm using. These are the patterns I decided on. They all kind of coordinate, but they're different, and the backs are all different. 
so you can see that when I made like on this piece here I flipped I simply flipped it over and used the back side of the same piece because then I knew they coordinated and I didn't even have to think this one was the back that's a little different but I'll we'll get to that this one You can see I use that and that is that. So this made it really easy to coordinate. You know, if you wanted to, you could put designer series paper on this side and just put plain cardstock. Um, gives you another place to stamp, although most of these pieces of DSP you could stamp on, they're light enough. That one's a little dark, but if you used a darker green, I think that would work. So anyway, you are, from each piece here of Designer Series paper, these are all right. Let me see. I'm going to cut these in order that they're on my card. That'll help me stay organized here. So let me get my measurements. The Designer Series paper, again, is four and a quarter. And so we're going to cut two and three quarters which is gonna go here, and this piece is two. Okay, so let me get my trimmer. Need to watch the direction on your paper again. If, if it has a, if it's a directional design, whoops, let me move that stamp pad out of the way there. There we go. So, we this one is going to be two and three quarters, which is gonna be right here. Now I can bring my trim, my trimmer blade down, and then this one, because this is the flip side, remember? This will just help you remember which side to do, or which piece to do which size. I'll flip it over for you. Okay. So there's one. Okay, the next one I have that I'm using is the one with the yellow bag. And I think that was the only one that was kind of directional. So when I cut the big sheet of paper, I had to make sure I had it go in the right direction. So the first one is two and three quarters. And then this one will be a piece of two inch. Get that out of the way. Uh, the next one has has the green background sorry about that so we'll cut that next and so this is two and three quarters and this will be two inches for this one And let me get the last one here. That's the peach, or I get I call it peach, but it's pale papaya, I believe, is the color of that. So this one's two and three quarters, which goes right here. And this piece is two inches. Okay, so move that trimmer. I think we're going to use it one more time before the project's over with. So we're going to start attaching our pieces. Very simple. Um, actually, it goes like that. With your larger piece to the right. So make sure I get those all nice and so they lay down. There we go. That one's a little bit off. I'm not going to mess with it right now. I'm going to leave it for now. 
So I'm just trying to decide which one. I think I'll use that for my front because that's the way I would put it in the card. So that I know it works. It'll, it'll lay flat that way. Okay. So my first page, so to speak, looks like that. I love that flower. Hate to cover it up. I don't have to. I could leave it. Maybe I will. I don't know. I have this as kind of a, a birthday themed card, I guess. I played with a lot of different um, ways to decorate, and there are so many different ways. There's no right, there's no wrong. So, and like this paper, you could cut it so there was a white border on all the sides. I, I saw, I've seen it done that way too. My biggest challenge is making sure I put the glue on the correct side of the designer series paper, especially since I'm going back and forth and back and forth here. From front to back to front to back. Okay, there we go. That's one. Okay, here's number two, which is that one. You can see there I used another piece of designer series paper, made a little pocket, and put a little tag in there. I like this pattern quite a bit. Okay. I have been playing with my new product from the Christmas, from the holiday or the, I guess they call it the July to December mini catalog. There's some fun products in there. I've already made a couple of cards for some swaps I'm in. I have one more card I have to design and mass produce. And once the everybody receives their swaps, then I can start sharing. Maybe I'll make them for you for one of my lives. Okay. There we go. Perfect. Okay. Third page. We're going to do that. The blue with the green. I think that's so pretty. So we're going to put This glue here. Like I said, I probably could have used adhesive or just the regular seal on here, but um, I don't know. The glue gives me just a couple of minutes to, you know, a few seconds to move it around and get it into place. So that's why I'm doing that instead of the seal. The other advantage is that it it, it does um, hold really well. So like I said, when you're doing something that's 3D and you want a heavy duty adhesive, Tombow something you definitely need to consider. Then our last is this piece. I'm not sure which way is the right way, but. And for this, you know, for this card, I used a lot of different dyes, uh, different sets and things like that. You really don't have to, you know, you could use, it's really whatever you want to do to decorate it. There's no right, there's no wrong. You want that there, so I'm going to put the glue on this side. Then I think we will have been a success. Okay, so there we are. Um, that's kind of my first page, my second, my third, my last page. Page, you know, it sounds like a book, but what it works. You get the idea. Okay, so since I'm going to go ahead and keep that as my first page, I'm going to put the ribbon on 
And I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now. So, be, and this is, I, I've seen some people where they ran it behind the designer series paper, but my thought is I've got this nice tunnel, for lack of a better word, to run it through. So why not do that? So let's see here. I'm gonna leave that attached while I tie this here. And I, it's nice if you leave the end attached, you don't you maybe don't waste so much. So let's see, I'm gonna tie a square knot because that's what I'm best at. I always have to think left over right, right over left. Oops, you know, that's a little short. Let me give it a little bit more length. There we go. Okay, we got it. And then you pull it opposite the direction you want it to lay, okay? Left over right, right over left. Sorry guys, my fingers I know were in the way. I could use, sometimes I could use one more hand. But, there we go, there's a nice square knot. Where's my scissors to trim that up with? See, and look at that, I really didn't waste any on that. All I didn't, all I wasted. So I think that's pretty good. So this is the soft succulent um, open weave ribbon. It is so nice. It's soft. It doesn't add a lot of bulk. It um, is easy to tie. It. Um, I can't wait to show you how I used it in one of the swap cards that I did. I used another color of it on one of my Christmas swap cards. And you know what? It fit, It works beautifully there. Okay, now we're going to do some embellishment on this. Now, like I said, I used several die sets, and I'll show you what, what I used before we get started. I used the rec stitched rectangle dies. I think this was the third one. Yep, I used that one. I used the, what's it called, scalloped contours. I used this one here. Uh, let's find it here. Used that right here. We'll be decorating that. And I used the tasteful labels. Use that one there, okay. So let me set these over to the side for right now. And we're gonna, gonna stamp. Okay, the first stamp, I've got my mat here since the first stamp I'm gonna use, the Happy Happy, is Photopolymer. And I'm gonna use Highland Heather. Now on this one, I stamped the first Happy full strength and then I went and just, I stamped it again without re-inking and that's you could do that too if you wanted just the lighter color. The first one could be stamped off on a piece of scratch paper and then this could be your your um, stamped image. So if you want a lighter, it's a great way to get um, extra bang for your buck out of your um, stamp pads. You kind of have two in one. Okay, so I'm going to do that like I did on that card. So that's my first image. And then I'm going to do it right below, a little bit lighter. There we go. Perfect. I'm going to cover that up or close up this ink pad. So I wanted to do a third happy, but it wouldn't fit. And so I took these out of that same stamp set. Let me show you the stamp set. It's Biggest Wishes that this stamp is from. So I use the happy and this. One of the challenges with this style of card is you're, you kind of have to be have tall, narrow images, okay? 
So this is this is really what's called stamping off. See, I did the dark one there, and then I stamped the light one on my project. In, I guess, I said it's a great way to get, you know, a different shade of the color you're using. My biggest challenge is to just remember to stamp off. There we go. Not perfect, but that's okay. It's handmade. Doesn't have to be perfect, right? Okay, let's put that. I hate to cover that pretty little flower up, but I guess we will. We're gonna put that right there. I think for this, I am gonna use my stamp and seal adhesive. get started. Sometimes you have to kind of prime it a little bit. Am I, am I actually moving? Come on. I just refilled it so I know it's got... There. There. I think I might be. Come on. There we go. I just wasn't moving it. My finger was rubbing over it, but it wasn't moving. So let's see. Yep. Yeah, the trick with this is you have to break the adhesive. And if you break it like that, that's that's best. If you do it where you get this long stringy piece, then you have to move your roller so that you can pull up more adhesive because you've pulled it off when you did it the last, you know. So, there we go. There's happy, happy. Okay, we're gonna do, a little, in this one, what I did was I made a little bit of, po a little pocket, and I didn't decorate this. This would be something you could write a note on, you know what? You could put a little picture in there, something like that. Um, let me get my piece of cardstock. I know I had that two inch, oh, here it is. Right there, it's two inches wide. Use the fancy tag topper punch. Like I said, you could do anything. Um, this is a bit bulkier of a card because of all the layers. So I really would not um, probably put a lot of embellishments on it. Just because then it gets too bulky and doesn't want to mail well so there's that let me now I took a piece of this designer series paper cut it diagonal this is actually the other half of that and it's two inches wide by three inches tall and I just cut it corner to corner to make this cute little pocket here and then I ran a very thin bead of this adhesive of this glue right there okay I could have used our, our Terran tape, but I was afraid it was a little bit too wide and then I wouldn't have much pocket space, if you know what I mean. So I'm putting that right there. And this can be as long, this little tag could be as long or as short as you want it. Okay, like I said, it, it would be, it'd be cute to put a little picture in. Okay, the next one I just put a flower on, and then I'm going to use this die cut here. I'm going to use this stamp set is the color and contour. I'm using this, these two stamps. And again, it can really be anything, and you could leave one blank. This paper is so gorgeous. Now this ink is soft succulent, so I'm Again, I'm stamping on my pad, on my foam, because this is a photopolymer stamp. Oops, I got a little messy with the ink, but that's going to be okay. I'm going to put it down and just let it set for a second. Don't rock it. Just put it down. I like to let it set. let that ink absorb into that paper. And you know what? I didn't do a very good job. I think I didn't ink very well, but that's okay. I have another one here. We'll try that again. I always cut out 
at least two die cuts like that. And if I have to, I'll get up and cut another one, but hopefully not. Let me, sometimes it's easier to actually do it like that. Just want to make sure I get it, it looks like it's inked up well. Let's try this here. Hopefully I didn't smear it when I rocked it a little bit. Beautiful, there we go. Okay, let me set this uh, out of the way here. That's the soft succulent. And then I am using the pale papaya for the flower itself. And this, as you can see from mine, this does not fill this in exact. It's kind of, it's very abstract. I'd like to kind of, sometimes I have better luck than others filling it in. Now that looks pretty good. Okay. So we're going to give this a try here. Let me see here. And again, if it's not perfect, it's not a problem. There we go. Yeah, it's not, not the best I've done, but it will work. I'll take it. And again, when I was doing this, I was pulling colors out of the um, designer series paper. When I was, see this one was the, I pulled the purple out excuse me there so I'm gonna put this little image on with I just want that to dry with my so I pulled that a little bit there we go so put that right there you know this would be a cute size die cut to put in there as a as a tag also or as a to write a little message on also. There we go. <coughs> and the final one, I'm using this die, which is one of my favorite. I love this little slot here. And I'm using the Happy Birthday from the Peaceful Moments stamp set. It's been around for a while, but it's a, it's a goodie. Okay, and we are just about done here, so. Don't need my mat since this is a rubber stamp with a foam backing already. On my last page, I wanted something where you could write your name on. So that's why I just chose this little happy birthday sentiment at the end. I used that, that was garden green. I'm gonna put that right on there. Make sure that's dry. It appears that it is. I just love that stamp and seal that it doesn't make any noise. I'm so used to hearing that little clackety clack of the other that we used to have. Okay, so there we go. And it wasn't too long. So this is the pinwheel tower card. And like I said, it does fit into an envelope, a regular sized envelope. Let's see here. Let me grab one. Maybe a little tight. It might need an extra ounce of postage. I, I guess I should. And there we go. See, look at that. Wouldn't someone be surprised to pull all, pull that out of their card, out of their envelope for their birthday or any other special event? You know, you could even use this for a graduation and tuck a, a gift card in there. You could put, you know, a twenty, a fifty, a hundred dollar bill, whatever you might be giving. Um, put a funny picture of them in there. I think it would be a really cute, there's so many possibilities. I, if you do this, I would love to see what you come up with. So thank you so much for joining me today. And I will see you next Monday night at 8 p.m. Eastern for Stamping with Denise.
You take care now. Bye, everybody.